Hey, hey folks. folks. Hey, hey folks. folks. David Molnar here, Rich Coleman. We're going live with take two, take two of podcast episode 20. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> Emily Orth is saying, I got some sound now. Awesome. I got sound. Yay, sound. Awesome. We got some sound advice to restart everything, and we it worked, you know? It, it kind of kickstarted the sound, you know? Sound off. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well done. Hey, we, we, you know, we had a great conversation for a minute about, about fireworks and all sorts of stuff while, while no one could hear us. It was, it was fantastic. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July weekend, everyone. Hope you enjoyed um, your Independence Day weekend. Rich, how was your those of you weekend? Those of you in America. Those of you in America. This is true. Um, yeah. This is true. Um, all right. Uh I don't, I don't so know. far, so good. Yeah, yeah. So, so far, far so, so good. good. Um, okay. okay, so we are at episode twenty, which is really exciting. I think we've had, I think we've had over a hundred thousand plays. I haven't done the math, but that's kind of what I'm guessing. Around a hundred thousand plays so far in this podcast. That's something to celebrate. That's awesome. Yep. Episode that. twenty. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, Awesome. Well, today, yeah, today is going to be a fun day, David. I'm pretty excited for what's going down today because of what? Why are we excited? Well, today we are today we are getting lots of comments saying David's echoing. I'm not sure. Why don't you Why don't you kill your um this mic? I think you're getting two mics, maybe. Mm, maybe. Echo. Uh, uh, folks, all you need to know is that Rich Coleman is doing great. Zero tech issues. How, how are we doing now? How are we doing now, folks? David Molnar, testing one, two, three. Better now, better now, better now. Okay. Oh, uh, that's good. The, the best part is this is like a 20 second delay. So anytime there's a problem, we don't even know up to like from 20 <laughs> to 45 seconds. Like when I say something inappropriate, I don't get yelled at for another like half of a minute. So it's been yeah, pretty great. It's great. Mm -hmm. I'm just excited that you joined us with your shirt on today, David, because half this the time my, my first call with you is topless. And <laughs> honestly, it might be the highlight of my day. That's right. It tops off your day. Tops wah, off. Wah, yes. Wah. Hey, today I'm really excited because in theory, we have good audio <laughs> that's working. Oh, my goodness. Um, but we have, we, have, uh, we have an amazing guest joining us today. Um, she has just done some phenomenal stuff. I'm a big fan of hers. And, uh, and I thought it would be really fun uh, to kind of bring her on and hear a little teeny bit of her story today. So we're going to bring on uh, Nada Salvatore. And I'm going to add her to this, to this uh, thing right now. Hey, Nada, how are you doing? Hey, guys. How are you? Thanks so much for, for joining us. You've been, you've been sitting here waiting through all the tech issues for the last you know, 27 minutes. Just kidding. Um, but uh, where where are you tuning in from? I am in Jacksonville, Florida. Nice Jacksonville. and sunny. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's sunny here too. We got four four or five hours from here, something like that. So, yeah. hey, Rich and I have a bunch of questions for you. Are you ready for it? Bring it on. I got a ton of questions. A ton of questions. David, for, David. First off, I think since we had so much tech issue, we were talking about giveaways. We should do both giveaways today. For anybody that shares this podcast because it's in a new weird spot, share this podcast. We talked about what we should give away. We kind of went back and forth before we went live. We're going to give away two, maybe three giveaways today. How does that make you feel, David? How does that make you feel, Nana? <laughs> I'm so happy for everybody that's going to get them. <laughs> Hashtag not my money. I'm all about it. Oh, <laughs> like thanks for thanks for just offering that. I, I appreciate that, Rich. You're so generous. You're, you're welcome. I, I'm, so I'm always generous with uh, <laughs> the David Molnar credit card. It's my favorite. <laughs> oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we'll give away we'll give away a hard drive, and then Nada, you have some camera straps that you love giving away as well, right? Yes, I'm excited to share that with you guys. It, it was definitely something that I used a lot at the beginning and still use it. So it'll be fun. Awesome. So we'll give away those. I, I'm not sure what straps. Do you, are you using their R straps, or do you do you remember what they're called, or are they just awesome 
and we'll we'll find out what your favorite straps are. They're awesome, and you're gonna find out where they are. <laughs> Love it. Love it. it. I'm like I'm like not Mr. Tech. Like I, I I know what some of the things are, but sometimes I'm like I don't. As long as it works really great, like that's at the end of the day, like that's that's the point. David but, David is still using a Canon 5D Mark One for professional shoots. Right. <laughs> I do have one somewhere up there on the shelf. I think it is up there. Um, well, I have a question for you. Um, what's your favorite color, Nana? It's green. I'm sorry, David. What color green? Like which, like is it bright green? The color um, of my eyes green. More like a little bit darker green maybe. Ooh. Okay, kind of like forest green? Yeah. Something like that? Okay, fantastic. Well, I, you, I like to call it Forest Davis green is my favorite color. Forest Ooh, Davis. Very good. Forest <laughs> Davis. That's my brother-in-law, my sister's, uh, my sister's husband. Um, awesome. So, uh, when you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, this is really important for photography things. When you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, assuming you did or do, or I'm not sure, um, do you use one knife or two knives? Um, I use one knife, but I rinse it in between. Ah, oh, okay. good answer. All right, okay. Uh, married, kids? Married for 10 years now. We've been together for 16. Um, Two, two little ones that have a three and a half and a six year old, two girls. Wow. Wow. Are you guys done? Are you going to have more kids or are y'all all done? We are all done. All done. <laughs> all <Yeah>. done. <laughs> no pressure. Her husband's listening and like finds out. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I no. thought we were having more. We wanted to have two. We, um, so we are both from Brazil. Okay. We've been here in the U.S. for about 16 years, and we don't have any family here, so we knew we at least wanted to have two kids so they can have each other. Yeah. And oh my gosh, what a great thing! Because my kids get along so well, and they're just they're just great together. So That's I need so you to teach great. me that one. Yeah. I know I got lucky, and I got lucky the first time, and they said, "Oh, he's not. You're not going to be so lucky the second time around. The second time is going to be hard." And and my second one was even better. So I just, I got lucky twice, I guess. So I'm stopping. I'm not gambling anymore. Ah. Good, good <laughs> call. Good call. Um, we had, so my first child was like just such a dream. So easy. Slept through the night. was so amazing. And we're like, you know, eight, eight months. He's eight months old. And we're like, man, we're just such great parents. Like we should write our parenting book. Like this is teach people how to just, you know. Cause like, this is easy. Like, I don't know why people thought this was hard. And we're like, let's get pregnant again. And then, so we had our second son, Christian, he came out screaming and he's a delight now, but he, he was, he was, a, it was rough for, for a while. And then we're like, Whoa, kids have different personalities. And you know, like, let's have two more. David yeah. said, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Um, I think I only have the gracious patience for two, but somehow, <clears throat> but I'm the man of the house. And, um, and I only wanted two kids, so now we have four. Um, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I get it. Uh, no, no. I, I, I literally sleep have... in a different bedroom every night just so I, we don't have more than two. Oh. <laughs> my, I can hear my like wife going from room to room trying to find me, and I just hide from her. <laughs> I cannot be seduced. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Um, so you grew up in Brazil. What part of Brazil? I'm all the way in the south of Brazil. It's called Rio Grande do Sul. So it's the last state in the south of Brazil. Like okay. as far as from here. Um, yeah. So I, it, I actually, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. I was going to say, is it cold there or is it like is it that far it, south? Yeah. It's, it's the coldest it gets in Brazil, right? So there's some cities where you get a little bit of snow. It doesn't ever really snow as much as it does here, but um, it's the coldest it gets in Brazil. Mm. Mm. Wow. And so you moved here to go to school or to just like what, what, what brought you here to the States 16 years ago? I came under a volleyball scholarship. Wow. Like so beach volleyball or what? No, regular volleyball, court volleyball. So I went to Arizona for the first two years um, okay. that I was and didn't speak any English at all. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Right. You didn't speak any English at all. You moved to the States, didn't, didn't speak any English. English at all. I knew maybe about 10 words that could not be put together in a sense. Um, and went straight to college, to a junior college, but it's still a college mm -hmm. in Arizona, which is where I met my husband, who came to play basketball, actually. Really? Yes. So we both came from Brazil. We were have been in the same place in Brazil and never met, but we met in Arizona when we both came wow. over. That's wow. awesome. 
Well, Brazil is a small country, so the odds are that y'all wouldn't have met, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, very, very little country. I actually have not been to Brazil, which is tragic. I, 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 I do need to go. I've been wanting to Landscape for a long time. 301. Landscape 301, and definitely I want to take a surf trip there. I will be happy to come with you and translate everything. Sounds great. Deal. They speak French over there, right? Just kidding. Sure. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oui, uh, enchanté. Yeah, exactly. No, I, my Portuguese is, is not very good. Um, well, so so where where are you now? Are you um, uh, where are you in your career at this point? You've well, I, I will say this. I'm a fan of your work. Every single time I see your photos, I'm like, oh my gosh, because I I've actually seen you like and followed you for the last year and a half like throughout this process. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, she's taking that, that amazing photo. She's booking those gigs right now. Like, holy cow. Um, and I know it's strange times with COVID and all this stuff like that, but, um, but what is, what are you, what are you doing these days? I and mean, we're going to rewind and talk about your story in a few minutes, but I want to kind of give them a glimpse, a glimpse to where you are now. Brag about yourself a little teeny bit, please. Oh gosh. Well, first of all, they was both <laughs> to say that because you mean so much to me so I can't even tell you but thank you so where I am right now so I am really focused on getting to my weddings my yearly wedding goal right so yeah. I have a goal because I have a family I have a goal of like 20 weddings a year and I think that's yeah. for me I do still some family portrait photography so I like that um, so I have been really putting a lot of effort in growing the business part of the client experience because that's yeah. really what's going to make it different than anybody else because there's plenty of people out there that can take great pictures, but people remember how you make them feel and you can have beautiful pictures and when they look at it, if they didn't have a good experience with you, it's they're not going to see the beautiful pictures. So I've been putting a ton of effort on building my client experience so people can go out there and share what I do and, and why they want to, they were with me and why everybody else should be taking their pictures with me. Mm. So really focusing on the business aspect of things. Um, now that I've done a little bit on the photography and first. Yeah. Plenty to learn still, but. Yeah, oh, always. I, I feel like I know nothing and, and I've been doing it for a long time. I'm, I'm just kidding. But, but I, I feel like there's always something to learn. Like I'm, I'm excited. I'm a life. I like to think I'm a lifelong learner. So that's awesome that you have that perspective as well. I love what you said. I, I want to like hone in on that for a second because that was yeah. like a nugget of brilliance. You're saying you could take the most beautiful pictures, but if you didn't make your clients feel good, or if they didn't feel good during that time, they're not going to like the pictures. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing what you yeah. said. That's what they're going to remember when they see the pictures. I mean, you, I'm sure we've all have seen people do that. Are, maybe they're starting. Maybe they don't have as many photography skills as you think. But somebody took a picture with them and they had a great experience. And they absolutely love those pictures. Your clients don't know technically what is better than, like, this picture is better than this picture. But they definitely remember that this person is a better person than this person and how they make them feel and yeah. what kind of experience. So we really, we are, as humans, we connect what we feel with what we see a lot. And if you think about maybe a vacation time you had with your family growing up, you know, you think of that place, you think about all the fun things you did. So our visual is very connected with our emotional. So I really believe that is important to make people feel good and mm -hmm. they will see your pictures even in a more beautiful way um, yeah. if they feel that. Oh, I love that. That's so good. That's so good. So you're, you're now shooting professional photo shoots. You started, oh, yeah. like, how long ago did you pick up a camera? Uh, about a year and a half ago. And it's not like you're just now starting to shoot professional photo shoots. Like, you've been shooting professionally. You started your business how long ago? So official business was in May. It was a year ago. So, wow. yeah. But I... I started from the get go. It was like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this right. Um, I'm going to have my prices. I'm going to have my business structure and I'm going to go for it. So I shot my first wedding, I would say within uh, four or five months of starting to play with a camera. And it oh was not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I shooting for somebody. It was me by myself, like going for it. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is, this is awesome. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to rewind and we're going to tell this story. Is that okay with you? Um, so, okay. Okay. So 
you, um, you know, you went to, you said in Arizona, is that what you said for your uh, volleyball scholarship, which is amazing. Yeah. I love volleyball. Um, we'll have to play beach volleyball sometime. Uh, we'll yeah. come to Jacksonville or something like that. Um, I'm not good at volleyball, but I, I will try really hard. And I will yell and scream when, when we score one goal versus you know, or, or one, one point. Uh, but, um, okay, so you went to school. You, you are a doctor. Is that what I heard? I, You're a doctor? doctor? Therapy, yes. Yes. So you've been doing that, which is amazing. That's obviously lots of school. <laughs> lots of school. And yeah. it sounds like, you, sounds like you must be very smart. Um, and then, so what made you want to switch or start pursuing your dream of photography? Yeah, so it was about, so about that time, a year and a half ago, I was transitioning out of, so I was managing a clinic. So I've been a physical therapy for 10 years now. So I was managing a clinic and it was kind of getting out of patient care a little bit and transitioning into some more admin kind of work. Okay. And it just, that transition made me sit down and think, like, if I wasn't doing this, what would I be doing? Like, what would be my other profession? Let's say if, if I cannot practice anymore starting mm. tomorrow, what would I do? And I remember when my second daughter was born, I asked my husband for a nicer camera so I could have something to take pictures of my kids. Because pictures have always been intriguing to me. And, you know, looking back at 16 years ago when my husband and I met and looking at pictures from Arizona, I could tell there was an attempt to composition somewhere in there and like trying to take more artistic pictures. And so I was like, you know what? I have this nice camera. Why don't I learn how to use it and, and start taking pictures? I think that would be a good kind of different way to, to use some of my energy and creativity and, and use a lot of the skills that I've learned from being yeah. a physical therapist into photography business because absolutely I think that was a huge part of how fast I was able to grow. Wow um, so so you, you're you're sitting there you have some time and you're thinking to yourself what would I be doing if I wasn't doing this and then you just you just decided to, to pursue it. Yeah so let's, I think photography is a great thing and I've always been interested in it and then I was like okay I need to learn right so I'll start my learning all over again. And not that I know everything that needs to be done, be known in physical therapy, but I was in a time of my career where the learning had slowed down. Yeah. And I call myself a pathological learner. Like I love learning new things. Yeah. And when I discover the world of photography, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much out there to learn. And it was just, instead of getting me overwhelmed, it got me excited about all the new things I could learn. That's great. So it sounds like you're not scared yeah, to try definitely new things. A seven. Yeah. No, I'm not scared of trying new things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what Enneagram number you are by any chance? I don't. I have to go back. It's, it's a long time ago and once I took that. But Rich, we should have like an Enneagram for photography podcast. Like should. episode or something. Like, we should talk about it. That'd be, yeah, that'd that'd be, be fun. fun. <laughs> because we could, yeah, we could even try to find like photographers who are different a Enneagram common. numbers. I'm wondering what yeah. she is. I'm wondering what she is. She might be a three. Maybe a, a three or a seven. I'm not sure. I um, have to look for this and let yeah. you know. It's not like you know, like a, a a seven is not better better than a three. It's just personality types, right. you know. But you know, three is the achiever, so they're like achieving stuff. Yeah. Seven seven is the enthusiast, and they value freedom among uh, uh, above everything else, which is which is being a seven. Um, and so, anyways, I, I just I'm wondering where <clears throat> wondering where you fall. Be kind of curious. Right. <laughs> so you just you decide to pursue photography, uh, and then what happens? Like you're like you got a camera, and yeah, and okay, and then what happened? So lots of buttons and you know fun things in the camera. So I had a Nikon D5100. Yeah, and had to go figure it out what to do. So um, I'm very visual person, which probably most photographers are. So reading the manual on the camera was not attractive to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to YouTube to go look for, you know, Google or YouTube and look for some ways to learn. And that's actually how I came across you. And, and you're, you were offering a webinar um, that I took. And there was some you know, further education um, offerings after that. So it, and it was just so easy to understand the basics of the camera, the way you explained. And, and I know you hear this all the time, but it was just like, I'm a very literal person because this is my second language. So to me, it was really easy to understand how to utilize the camera 
Um, and then from there, it was just practice, practice, practice. Um, every day doing something and going for it. And, you know, love that. And, yeah, and understanding that if I really wanted to do this, that there was some time that needed to be invested on. And because I'm not 21 anymore, that my growing 22 curve, or three or what? Oh my <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> uh, that my learning I'm 24, curve is but, yeah. pretty steep. Yeah, yeah, you look like 24. <laughs> Don't well, we thank all? You. It was great. Yeah, so, you know, that it needed to be fast and furious because I'm not, you know, my learning curve had to be pretty steep. So I, you just dove in. Well, it was it was it was awesome seeing you kind of emerge into the scene in our community because we have these, you know, amazing um, Facebook community groups, and I just saw you posting all the time, and I, I saw your photos like start off like, wow, this person has potential. Um, and then just kind of like go grow exponentially. Like it was very evident because you were posting, it seemed like you were posting a lot from what I'm, I'm just kind of remembering from year, year and a half ago. Um, seemed like you were posting a lot and then just kind of like showing major improvements. So you were going after it. I think a lot of people pick up their cameras and they maybe start learning and then they just stop. They don't practice. But the difference was from what I hear you saying is you took the training and you actually applied it and then started practicing like crazy and then and then learned 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 you know yeah. and so and so you you took that like once you started learning um which is really encouraging thank you for for sharing that that's like, that's encouraging because that's like that's our goal that's our heart is trying to help people pursue their photography dreams and you literally took that and ran with it um so then what happened so then you you know you learned how to use your camera you started getting some confidence on your belt um, that was maybe January, December, January, 2019, early 20, no, sorry, late, late 2018, early 2019. Um, and then by May, you, f you started your business officially, like legally started your business. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, w it was, you know, um, again, I knew I had to, I, I have very limited time, like with a full-time job and two kids. So if I'm going to put time onto something, it has to be like, I'm going to put time onto this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it, it was fun to be able to understand it. But then as soon as I got down the, the camera basics and got comfortable with messing with my camera, I understood really quickly that if I wanted to do this, I needed to invest time on understanding the business part of things. Yeah. And, and helping that grow. So, and I talk about it this a lot when I talk to the people that are starting. The starting time is the time where you have the time to invest, invest on building a good business background for your business. So it's the time where you can invest and look into a CRM system, a client management software to for when your clients are here. Is the time where you can work on a website. Is the time where you can work on an email sequence for your you know, for your, um, the people that you're going to be adding later is a time where you can understand how to do your taxes and, and what you need to be a business. So this is the beginning is a time you don't get, you don't do that when you're already booming with clients and you have no time to edit your pictures. Like this is the time to invest on that business. So I really, as soon as I was able to feel comfortable with the camera, I started looking into what do I need to be a real serious business? Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. So so, so then that's so awesome, what, man. What what gave you the what gave you the confidence or did you have the confidence to start your business or did you just push through and do it anyway? Because so many of our students are like, I don't know when I'm ready. You know, like how did you know you were ready? Did you know that you're ready? Yeah. It's the same like people say, I don't know if I'm ready to have a kid yet. It's like nobody's ever ready to have a kid. You know, you just mm. what do you have to lose? There's nothing to lose. Like you have you don't have a business yet. There's nothing to lose. So I'm the kind of person that I'll push through it and I get things done. And there's a sense of urgency that happens when the ball is already rolling and you're more likely to solve the problems that come at you if you're already doing it than if you try to solve all the problems before they come. Right. Mm -hmm. So every time you're starting a new project, if you try to, to brainstorm all the problems that you're going to have ahead of time and find solutions for them, 
that sense of urgency is not there yet. So if you just get it going and then when a the problem comes, you're going to be a lot more invested into solving that problem and putting down that barrier if you already have things going for you. Mm. So I'm not a proponent of just get it going and you're going to, yeah. you know, it's going to give you motivation to figure things out. Yeah. That's what Will Smith, Will Smith said something very similar to what you just said. Uh, he said, I buy a brand new TV and it comes with a 2000 page manual. When I came home with my son, they gave me nothing. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it's very interesting. And I keep hearing you say, like it's re- encouraging to me to hear you keep talking about the investment and investing. Cause you said my husband invested a camera and then it was time for me to invest my knowledge. And I just love that you have a learner's heart to, to value the training and the learning. Cause that's something that most people take for granted. And as you, hire employees and get second shooters you'll realize really quick who their learners are and who just wants to make money per hour it's 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 super fun for us to hear that from you yes yeah so that was that was the thing but i would say go for it i mean you don't you don't know when you're ready you just you just have to be ready and you you do your best to prepare you know and fill yourself with as much knowledge and as you can and you just go for it I remember asking people to second shoot for a wedding so I could get some experience and, you know, nobody would say yes, which is very common. And now I understand why even <laughs> more. Than yeah. And, and you, you know, you ask and you ask and you ask. And if I had just waited to take my first wedding after that, I don't know. I don't know when that was going to happen. I second shoot for somebody for the first time not too long ago. I've been shooting my own weddings, you know, without ever second shooting for somebody. And obviously, you're going to, you know, talk to that couple and, and, and help them understand that you're starting and you're not going to be charging thousands of dollars, but you just go for it. You know, you have to start somewhere. Hmm. You just have to start somewhere. What I love is that you didn't wait for someone else to pick you. Yeah. yeah. To, to say, Nada Salvatore, you are a photographer. Come and shoot. Come and do a second shoot for my wedding you know, or whatever it is. You didn't wait for another photographer to say, you're good enough, here's the stamp of approval, approval, here's your certification, whatever it is, like you said, I'm gonna pursue this. And mm-hmm. even if I don't know everything, even if I can't anticipate all of the roadblocks, blocks, all of the hurdles, all the obstacles along the way, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna call myself a photographer and I'm gonna pursue this and when I need to, I will correct course and figure it out. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And that's inspiring. I mean, I, like the, the, you, you need to go back and read these comments from our live viewers right now, because they're, it's, it's, it's beautiful. They're, they're very inspired by it. Um, and, and yeah, it's just, it's absolutely, everyone's saying she's so, she's so inspiring. And well, I just shared the link to your website just a, just a few minutes ago. So oh, it's, that's, NS, it's, NS. It's, it's nuts. I, I said, I said earlier, and like, I joke a lot, but this is like, you went from zero to better than me in a year and a half. <laughs> like that's, that's amazing. Like, that's like, just like you had the, the know-how to like learning how to play guitar takes practice. You don't just pick it up and are great, but you have to invest in the guitar and you have to invest in the time it takes to learn how to play it. You're not just going to pick it up and be great, but you said, I'm going to pick it up. And in six months, there's going to be a difference. And that's, what's so inspiring about you having just met you and looking at your work and feeling depressed all at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh uh, yeah. So, so, so nsphotobook.com is not a Salvatore's website. NS stands for not a Salvatore. Um, so I love it. And, and I, and you know, your last name is a beautiful name and it's actually not that hard to spell. Uh, but I can mm-hmm. see how, I can see how maybe you'd want to use your initials or something like that for that. I mean, I'm assuming that was kind of your, your thought process for picking the name yeah. for it. Um, it's, it's a different, it's a different name, obviously. Um, so I didn't want it. I didn't want it to keep it simple. You know, people need to keep it simple. And again, it's business strategy, right? So, and then having having my name on the business and having photography in there would kind of lock me into only that. And then maybe one day, if I wanted to do something different, then that wouldn't be you know an option for me. So, uh, just thinking ahead. So I'm I'm really. Yeah you know, focus on, we talk about, we have to, you want to 
dress for the job that you want, not the job that you have. Mm. So I kind of apply those same principles into my photography business. So I've built a business for, you know, high end weddings and family portraits and for lots of clients. So mm. when that happens, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm here and I'm ready for it. I'm not going to work on it when I get there. Yeah. I already worked on it from the get go. I, I love that. So, um, so inspiring, so encouraging. So a couple of questions for you. Um, how did you book? So you, you, you know, you started learning your camera a year and a half yep. ago. All right. And we'll call it a New Year's resolution at the beginning of 2019, approximately, right. right? And then five months later, you started your website, your business. And um, and then when did you shoot that first wedding? Was it before you started your business officially or right at the same time? Or It was in March. So okay. I picked wow. up the camera in November, December, and I shot that wedding in March. So I'll say four months later. And how did that first wedding go? It actually, it was, it, it was fun. It didn't, it go, went well. Um, I did a lot of, again, trying the best I could prepare without actually act, being in the wedding. So found a ton of resources were uh, Zach and Jody Gray from you. Yes, Zach and Jody Gray. Uh, yeah. I could be with them at the wedding and kind of seeing what's happening and how to problem solve things. There you go. And, yeah. and so that was the best way I could be at a wedding without being at a wedding. Yeah, so, so trying funny. to prepare ahead of time. And I remember um, I remember one of the bridesmaids said to me, she's like, you're so, it's, you're so calm. It, you know, have you been doing this for a while? Because you're so good at, like, being calm and, and knowing what to do next. And it was so, it was fun to hear that. And that was my first wedding. So, you know, I was prepared. <laughs> I was over prepared because I wasn't going to, you know, this was serious to me. So. I knew everything I needed to know. I knew I had a flow. I had a plan. I had backups. I had help with mm. me. And I just went through it the best way I could. And, you know, obviously it wasn't the nicest venue out there. And But it was it was what I needed to have my first wedding. It was people that trusted me. They were okay with me being, with that being my first wedding. And, and I just went for it. And I acted like I knew everything that was going on. And, and yes. I did. And I did have a lot of confidence mm. because I studied as much as I could before. Mm. Mm. So you you started learning your camera. You started getting some confidence because you practiced the crap out of it. You practiced so much. And you started getting some really good photos and you started getting some confidence. You didn't wait for someone out. Like so many people would be intimidated. Like I, so many people would like say, well, what, what should my website be? What should my business should be? Should like, you know, what, what do I need to know? Blah, blah, blah. All these different things before, uh, before they do a professional gig. But instead you said, I'm going to go and I'm going to do all these things. And I'm not going to worry about all these obstacles. I'm going to go do this anyway. And did that first wedding that you, um, I, I guess I'm trying to say so many people wait too long and it, be, it starts building up and it becomes a bigger and a bigger ordeal or hurdle to get over just to start. So I love how you're like, I'm going to do this, but it wasn't like you haphazardly jumped no. into shooting that first wedding. It sounds like <laughs> you prepared like crazy. You practice like crazy. Um, and you knew what you're, you're doing. And obviously with, um, you know, with your, with your, you know, skills and your education and, uh, you're, you know, obviously a people person, you're able to bring that calming sense to the situation, um, and really use people skills, I think, to navigate something stressful, like a wedding day and achieve a result where people are saying, wow, you must've been doing this for a long time. Like, how yeah. amazing, how amazing is that? That's it so was, amazing. It definitely makes a difference to have some, some people skills for sure. But but it's all in a sense of how understanding how to place that into a photography situation, right? Into a wedding situation. What do you need to be when you're there as your photographer? You're going to be more than just taking pictures. You're going to be the person helping them. Know. This people who are getting married for the first time. They have no idea what they're supposed to do next or right. how long they have to get to, to get ready. And and then who has the reins and and where do they go next? So you need to understand that you're there to be their person for that day and mm. you know you, you're guiding them and you're, you're slowing things down so they can enjoy that moment a little bit more and and take that that day that goes on so fast um so there's a lot that goes into it 
beyond knowing how to work your camera, but it always starts with that because if you're not, if that is not second nature to you, then you have to focus on that camera and you're losing all the good stuff that's going on around you and all the opportunities to make that a great experience. So mastering your camera is so, so, so important to be able to have that confidence and to be able to be there for them and be more than just the photographer taking pictures. Because if you're, if you're stuck behind the camera doing this, yeah. you know, like, and like frowning and stuff like that, you're not doing what you should be doing, which is, is building this relationship and building trust and making eye contact. That's so exactly. important. It needs to be, as you said, secondhand, second nature to be able to, you know, to be able exactly. to utilize your camera before you're doing these professional shoots. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, the biggest thing. So, okay. So you shot a wedding in March or, you know, four or five months afterwards. Amazing. Yeah. And it turned out good. And people thought you'd been doing it for a long time. Bravo. Um, that's awesome. So then, then what happened? Did you shoot some more gigs? Uh, like, did you do family portraits or like, you know, what happened? How did you start booking these? A, what did you start booking? And then the second part of that question is like, how did you start booking these gigs early on? And I think that's a student, a lot of, um, sorry, I think mm -hmm. it's a question a lot of our students would have is how do you book gigs when you first get started? Yeah. So on that first, on 2019, I shot 143 sessions between families and weddings and, and everything else. So 143 uh, yeah on my first my first year there it's 143 um i went back and counted actually so you after didn't listening. practice at all like you just you, know, you, didn't, you <laughs> didn't go for it at all 143 <laughs> sessions yes yeah, so my first so that for during that first year there um so it was a lot of i invested on getting my face out there and getting people to know that I'm a photographer and this is what I'm doing. So obviously you're the people within your reach are going to be the first people that you're going to be photographing. So friends that you have, and I don't even have family, uh, obviously in the country. So I didn't get to, to photograph my own family to, to practice, but you know, friends, I did my first session, my first family session for free. The second one, I already charged for it and I've been charging since then. I did one free session my entire career for like a, a family friend because I said I wanted this to be my practice session for a family session and I have been yeah. charging since then. Any other session that I've done without charging has been a style shoot or something that, you know, it was my decision to give away that. It was not somebody asked me to. I've been very lucky. I talked to a lot of people and they said you know, they don't know how to deal with friends and families that ask them for free sessions all the time. I have never had anybody ask me for a free session. None of my friends have ever done that. Um, and I think is part of it is just because of how I present things. Like this is a business, this is my business, this is my new business and I'm investing in myself hmm. to grow this. And so they see that is, you know, there's something that is worth investing in me to support me. Um, yeah. But I just started charging and, you know, it wasn't a lot, but slowly it went up to where it is today. And this year has been amazing. I'm, I'm doing great and projecting to have a, a six figure business this year. So. Woo. Wow. It's, it's, wow. Well, and, and she's, and she's a doctor. <laughs> so it's, you know, it was, reaching out to families and friends, let them know that you're doing this now. I mean, I used every single opportunity that I had to let people know that I'm a photographer and I, and I have this solution to your problem, right? Because you're offering, you're not selling something, you're offering a solution to, to somebody's need of having a picture taking. Yeah. So I the bank to open my my LLC and the person that was um, helping me was actually pregnant and we started talking and she was looking for a photographer for her maternity picture so I said well you've just found it I am your new photographer so um, she became I love my that confidence by the way yeah. that's awesome that's awesome that that's hard to find go ahead continue yeah yeah, so I just, we, she became my client and I took her maternity pictures and I just took her family pictures this year again. And I'm about to take her daughter's one year old 
you know, picture. So it, it, they'll come back if you really give them a good experience. But I found the opportunity to talk about what I was doing to everybody around me. And that's how I found my clients. I volunteered work in the beginning at church, at family fairs. I bought boots in, 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 in school fairs. And I was just out there so people would know what I, what I was doing. And I use social media a lot, like a lot of Instagram, uh, being there as a, as a person and, and starting to talk about my business and what I do um, as often as I can. Wow. I mean, <laughs> zero to 143 sessions is like, you, you can't, yeah. you can't, for, like, you can't, conv yeah, I mean, that's, that's just astounding. Um, I don't want to work that much, but but that, but that's that's impressive. No, I'm just I'm just, I'm just messing. But that's, know, right? that, that, that's that's absolutely it's incredible. It's um, yeah, that's absolutely incredible. So uh, I'm I mean I'm just trying to wrap my head around all this. Like I, I knew you did like a ton of sessions. I don't think I realized it was 143 sessions. Like oh my gosh, um, are you are you going to keep that pace for this year? I know COVID could have you know put it wrench in that, but. Are you keeping that pace? Are you trying to just raise your prices and scale back a little teeny bit on the amount? Or what do you, what's your goal and projection for this year? Yeah, so <clears throat> you said six a, figures, which is incredible. Yeah. From a wedding standpoint, I want, so my goal for this year was, it was between 12 and 15 weddings. Okay. And then, yeah. And then my goal for next year is 20. And I don't want to ever do more than 20. I think 20 is a good number for me as a, as somebody who has a family. Yeah. Um, to spend some weekends with my kids so but yeah. for me to do was 20 and not have to do as many sessions in between obviously there's a there's a price point that I need to get to to do that so I'm working towards that as well but um I think because I'm still in a practice mindset you know I can't just say well I'm good you know and I don't need to practice anymore I still yeah. would take these sessions as like COVID was was good in a sense of obviously got us all home and, and reconnected with people. And I actually had really good, the two months that I wasn't being able to shoot, I had really good months. I made more money than some of the months I was shooting. Cause because you're booking ahead or something. Booking, but I, I sell products. So I sell prints and canvases and albums. So people were at home with time to now print their pictures, right? Cause they're all sitting at home. So I was proactive enough to reach out and say, hey, this is a great time to put your album together. Or this is a, you know, let's put it, let's make a big sale so you can, you know, print your picture. So I had people coming back that had had a session months and months ago that were able to print their pictures and have everything. So during that month, I actually, I wasn't, I wasn't doing nothing. I was working hard. I was working on revamping my website. I was working on all kinds of background of the business. Um, I wasn't shooting, but I was definitely working for sure. So it slowed down maybe the number of sessions. Um, I don't know. I haven't counted how many I've had so far, but um, I've got to my wedding. 247. Right. <laughs> like that. So I've got to my wedding goal already in I've been so busy since we started shooting again. It's been like, go, go, go. I had a, a couple of weeks ago, I had 11 sessions back, you know, back to back. Um, but Did, wait, sorry, rewind. You already got to your wedding goal. Like meaning you already booked 15 weddings for this year. Yeah. Congrats. Wow. <laughs> so are you going to book the extra five or no? You're going to cut it off or. Um, I don't know. I think I have to go and look it up on my total, you know, just all my business goals in general. And, and I might be able to just stop at these 15 and, and, you know, take the ones, but I do have one more bridal show to attend. So it could happen. Yeah. Charge, charge, charge next year's pricing for the last five. And that'll, that'll I'm prove the point for what to charge it's, next year. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Worst year of my life, 2012. I shot 55 weddings. Worst year oh. ever. Great year financially, but oh my gosh. It's not worth it. 55, I'm a, 55 rides is a, a nightmare to at orchestrate. Rich, I think I, my life, what I understand that my time is very valuable and there's sometimes no money that can make me give away some of my time. So I have yeah. to be really smart to. Oh, know. this this was pre kids and my wife doesn't love me. So it was fine. <laughs> hey, Rich, yeah, apparently, 
point in your life, it's completely fine. But it, we get to a point, I think we understand that it's not worth it, right? Yeah. Hey, Sean, apparently we suck, Rich, because Shonda said Podcast 20, this is definitely the best one out of all the episodes. So uh, That's all right, Shonda. That's all right, Shonda. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Shonda. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's awesome. Not apparently we love you. Maybe we'll have to have you back for more. Um, but, um, well, okay, so we've talked about a bunch of things. We, we you know, we've danced around the timeline a little teeny bit. Um, I feel like I want to just keep on prodding and asking more and more questions about all these things. Um right. Uh, plus, I didn't ask what your favorite animal is, but for next time, for next time. Um, okay, so what's some advice? Like, we, you've talked about all these things, and there's so many takeaways. There's so much inspiration packed into this episode 20. <clears throat> what If you could tell someone starting out, if you could tell our students one thing, because you know you've been our student before, and yeah. now, you're, now you're better than Rich. Just kidding. Just kidding. Rich. Uh, but, uh, it's okay. I'll take no, it. But, I, but I, I am a fan. For those of you guys who did not check out her website yet, please go back and check it out, nsphotobook.com. It's really simple. Um, and we'll post a link to your Instagram, um, nsphotobookweddings, um, or at nsphotobookweddings. That's, that's the Instagram. I'll post that one as well. Um, but, um, so go check that out. Go f make sure and follow Nada. Okay. Um, make sure and follow her wedding account. Let's get her to a lot more subscribers. Um, uh, she's got, she's got tons, but we'll, we'll get her to, to even more. Um, so what's one piece of advice that you would give to students who were in your position a year and a half ago? Okay. A lot of the people that are in our, that are listening right now are in our uh, amazing membership program called the photo mentorship. So they're taking courses like master your camera and, um, you know, Lightroom 101, which I believe pro were probably the courses that you took. Um, yeah. at this point the, I mean, if they actually do those courses and they practice, they will learn, yeah. they'll learn, you know, the, the foundations. What, what piece of advice do you have for that? For, for people that are in that, that situation that are learning at this point? Go for it. You know, be confident, believe in yourself, put the time in. It's not easy. Nobody said it was easy, uh, but it's worth it. If you really want to do this, you know, sacrificing your time and your to learn and investing on yourself is number one thing. So you, you, most of you guys are already doing that, which is amazing. You, you're in the group and you're getting the mentorship. So I would say invest in yourself is the number one thing I would say to anybody starting. Um, the, you know, I remember listening to to David's you know webinar and he offered he made an offer at the end to join. And I was like, should I do this? Should I not do this? And I was like, you know what? I need to invest in myself in order to, you cannot ask people to invest in you if you don't invest in yourself. Mm. That's number one thing. So you need to be able, and then once you invest in yourself and you practice and you have all this knowledge, you can confidently say, I can be a good photographer for you. Mm. That's what's going to help give you the confidence to, offer your services to people to be helping them figure it out the the problem of you know having their pictures and, and be there for them so you know work on your confidence obviously working on your on your skills to give a great experience to your clients people will keep coming back to you if they had a great experience and we were talking a little bit earlier like it doesn't matter how good your pictures are if you're not giving them a good experience it you know, they're not going to see those pictures as beautiful pictures and as beautiful memories. So really investing on giving your clients a good experience, which means invest in yourself so you know how to do that. And don't neglect the business part of your photography business because it is a photography business at the end of the day. Um, and a lot of us are creatives and we don't like to sit down on the computer sometimes and do some of the admin work that has to be done, but that's what's going to build a good stru structure to give your clients that kind of experience that you're looking for. So you can do it. I can, I can do it with little kids and, and another full-time job. You can absolutely do it. Uh, there is no reason why you could, this is my second language. I have no family support here. You know, I'm, I'm in a different country and you can absolutely do it. There's no reason why you could. Wow. Um, <laughs> Wow. Love it. Thank you so much for, for, for that. I mean, like I'm inspired and fired up. I think I'm going to start a photography business. Um, you can do it. You have to learn how to shoot again. I would have to learn how to shoot again. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. 
Uh, wow, I'm just that's awesome. Art, you know, you you must go back and read the comments because they're just they're they're so encouraging. They're so awesome, so awesome. They're they're absolutely love everything you've had to say. So thank you so much for for giving us so much of your time. We've got a sorry. What were you gonna say? Did I cut you off? No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, we have some we have some giveaways to do. Ba ba ba. So we've got. We've got. Uh, we're gonna do three giveaways. We talked about. We talked about giving away Nada Salvatore's favorite camera strap, so we're gonna do that. We talked about giving away a free hard drive because you need to be able to back up your photos. So we're gonna give away a free five terabyte hard drive. And what we're also gonna do is those courses that you started off with. Which courses did you start off shooting or taking? Did you take the master camera course from me? Yeah. Did you Did you take the editing course? For me the lightroom 101 or the master editing in lightroom maybe back then um we're gonna give away those and i still organize everything the way you teach in your course and it's funny because i've i've come across other photographers that i work with and i was like no i was like this is a master they're like that's oh my wrong God, so much easier <laughs> 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 so i still do everything the same sweet i'm glad that i'm glad that was helpful so we're going to give away those two courses as well uh, but we're going to give away, actually, we're not going to give away those two courses. We're going to give away um, all of our courses uh, to one to one winner. We're going to give, um, so you can take those courses that Nada started off with. We're going to give away the photo mentorship for two months free to one of you guys who shared um, this podcast episode. And um, and then, yeah, so we'll, I'm going to, I'm going to send, um, I'm going to send these over. I want Nada to be able to announce a couple of these. See if we can put this in the chat. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, Nada. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to announce. Hopefully you can see that in the chat. I'm going to announce the winner of the photo mentorship, two months free. Okay, you're also going to get five credits um, uh, to get presets, photo wow. editing presets in Lightroom um, as well. And uh, the winner of two months free of the photo mentorship is Lori Cutsinger. Waffler, or Waffler? Not really sure. Waffler. Waffler and the Waffler. waffling on the um, on the on the. Uh, hey yo. Sorry. Bum, bum. Uh, did you? Congrats, that, Lori. Congrats, Lori. You've won two months free of the photo mentorship, and you can go take Hello. that course, Master Your Camera and um, Lightroom 101. Which and you better helps. shoot your first wedding in four and a half months. So we'll <laughs> yes. take over the world, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, all right. So we're going to give away. <coughs> excuse me. We're going to give away the camera strap next. Do you do you see those names, Nada, or do you need to? Yeah, I see it. Okay, we're going to do a drum roll because we we forgot to do I forgot to do the drum roll last time. Okay, yeah. drum roll, please. The Nada's favorite camera strap goes to goes to Steve Dana Wibble. Steve Dana Wibble. Wibble, wibble? with it. Wibble with wibble. it. Wibble with it. Wibble with it. Wibble with it. Wibble with it. I could be saying it wrong. Wibble, well, is... we've got some. We've got a little wibble room with his, you know, with the pronunciation of his name, you know. Um, hey, I, I'm with you. It's okay. Wah, wah, he, it's... Um, awesome. And then we're going to give away a hard drive, a five terabyte hard drive. I, I'm yeah. going to see if I have one on my desk right now. I, it's, I have one that's plugged in. I can't just yank it out. We're going to give away a five terabyte hard drive for one of you guys. All you have to do is share this live, you know, recording of this podcast. Or take two of this live recording yeah. of this podcast. Uh, and the winner of that one is D Worksco. Yeah. D Worksco. D or Dia? I'm not sure. D yeah. Wors could be Worskow. I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm Worse, not sure. you gave me the hard. You gave the hardest name. He I'm, does that. I'm sorry. He does that. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm just. I'm dyslexic, and he does that to me all the time. Oh gosh. Um, Oh man! Well, congrats everyone on uh, congrats to three winners. We've got Lori Cutsinger Waffler who won two free months of the photo mentorship and five credits to get preset packs of her choice, and uh, Steve Dana Wibble or Weibel won Wibble the camera it. strap. The, uh, you know, the camera strap. Can't talk. And then Dia Worskow, maybe Worskow. not sure. D or D Dia. I'm not sure. Uh, Worskow. Um, not. Not sure which guy how to pronounce that, but anyways, 
Um, so you've won the free hard drive as well. Not a salvatory. If you guys have not checked out her website, please go check it out at nsphotobook.com. Go follow her um, her main Instagram account at nsphotobookweddings. And then she has a link to nsphotobookfamilies as well because she separated those two brands so brilliantly to kind of create some separation there, I'm assuming. Um, and um, and that's, that's, that's super amazing. Go check out her stuff. You can find it all on, not there. Um, sorry, I almost posted the wrong link. Um, nsphotobook.com. I'm going to grab that. <clears throat> I'm going to put that there. And go, I go just check out her stuff. You, like, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help anybody that has questions. Like, hmm. I was helped a lot by a lot of people, and I can only give it back. So I'll be more than happy to answer hey, any questions, DMs, uh, anything. I love that. Thank you for being so so gracious with your time and so generous. And if you are in anywhere near the Jacksonville area or somewhere else and you want to fly her out, I don't know if you, I don't know travel. if you travel. I travel. I travel. She travels. She travels, folks. You can you can book her for a shoot because she's amazing at nsphotobook.com. nsphotobook.com. So go. Hopefully you'll get some gigs out of this. Out of yeah, this she, she has one in so. Scotland. She has one in Scotland this year. What? Yeah, you got one in Scotland. I went to Scotland with a couple next year, so that's exciting. Next year, yeah, it's awesome. In 2021. Yeah. Perfect. All right, you'll be able to travel by then. So it'll be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will too. Who knows? Who knows? Hopefully. Um, but it, uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Nada, thank you so much for your time. You've been oh, so gracious you. and so generous. Thanks for coming on and inspiring us all. Maybe we'll inspiring have to have me. back. Yeah. Yeah. Inspiring me. That's awesome. Thank you guys. So I need, awesome. shoot. I need to go shoot more. I mean, I, I could never think that a, a year and a half ago that I would be talking to you today. So thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you for for honoring us with your time and with your knowledge and your wisdom and your incredibly inspiring story. Thanks so much. Love it. All right, folks, David Molnar here, your photography mentor with your co-host, Rich Coleman. And our special guest today, Nada Salvatore, nsphotobook.com. Go check out her stuff. Book her her for shoots. Um, (laughs) And uh, we love you guys. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you next week. Same I love place, you. same time on the podcast. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe on time. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs>